break time is over. I have this message, and um, I thought, like, I, I think it's an amazing message. I thought it was awesome. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. I felt like it didn't come out the way I wanted it to the first time. So the good news is you're going to get the good one. You're going to get the good version here. All right. So I want to talk about the wave of blessing, the wave of blessing. Third John, verse 2. It's only one chapter, so just chapter 1, verse 2, says this. This is the desire of God for us here this morning. He says, Beloved, above all things, I pray, I hope, that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. There's so much here in this verse. But what a verse for a day like today when people say, well, what is God's plan? What is God saying about what's coming next? Right now on the news, I hear a lot about another wave. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to declare to you from the scriptures, this is the next wave, the wave of blessing that is going to come on God's people. Amen. Thank you, one person. I see you. Okay. So he prays, uh, first of all, that we're healthy that we're strong, that we have more than enough. Asking God for an abundance, my conviction and the, the preaching and the message of this church, asking God for abundance is the least selfish thing we can do. Because when we have more than enough, we can also give to others. If you see flags here in this church, uh, these are just a small representation of the number of uh, countries that this church has impacted either directly through face-to-face -face preaching or through missions. I, I am happy and honored to tell you that the Church of the Crossroads, we give 10% of what we come, we tithe out to other missions and other organizations. And I believe that that's such an awesome thing. Even now, I said last week, I'll say it again, I believe this children's building is going to be built sooner rather than later, and that's going to be so that we can give to others. We can give to the children as we're coming and we're moving into the new phase, uh, not the new normal, because nobody knows what the new normal is going to be, but as we're moving past this current season, God has given us enough to be able to be a blessing to the children of, of the community. This is a very unselfish thing to say, God, let my cup overflow. Let me give to others. I don't know about you, but there are people in my life close to my life, that I'm grateful that I've been able to help throughout the years. It's such a blessing to be able to have enough and to give others. So this is what it says here. The Bible's saying that, and it's all connected. It's interesting that it's so connected here. Health, uh, your finances, and then he says, even as your soul. That word there in the Greek for soul is psuche, all right? And that is where we get the word psyche from. So God is saying, I want your psychology. I want your brain. I want you to be well. It's so interconnected. I just want you to think about when how many times we've been sick. And so then we go to the hospital or the doctor. And then we get a bill. And we're like, oh, my gosh. I wasn't expecting that. I wish, I, I wish the hospital was like McDonald's. Like, give me the number two. Right? Because you get a bill and you don't even know what you're paying. Right? They need like a menu. All right. Turn to page four. They don't have that. All right. You just get a bill. And so it's kind of connected. You get a little sick. Then you get a bill. Then you get stressed. Um, no, I'm not talking about you. I'm not projecting. Then I get stressed. All right. And then I got to call and negotiate and all that stuff. Can I make a payment plan? Eight Month, whatever, all right? Here he's saying, I want to take care of all of that. That's the will of God. Just take care of all of it, even as your soul prospers. God wants us to live well. He wants us to not be so consumed with our current struggles that we have enough bandwidth to serve others. Asking God for an abundance is a very unselfish posture, okay? Money is a, is a huge, huge stressor, stressor here. But the Bible says in John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, I have come to give you life in abundance, right? Think about how many times, I think about how many times I've said, even this last week, this, this last month's been intense. Let me just say this, just because at times we struggle and our current reality doesn't line up with what we believe God's desire is, 
doesn't mean that your current struggle is gonna be that way forever. This last year, this world has been going through a challenge together on many levels, okay? It's not gonna be that way forever, okay? But I know me, uh, just a few weeks ago, I was saying, God, just let me make it to spring break. Just let me make it to spring break. And there are seasons when we have the, let me just make it to here, but we're not gonna live this way. Those are just seasons. God's desire for us is to have life in abundance. He's a God of abundance. He's a creator. And this is awesome because what this tells me it, that, is that in our God's economy, in God's heart, there's enough for all of us to be blessed. All right? So when you're blessed, God didn't take it from me to give it to you. Right? There's more than enough for everyone. And this helps us not get jealous, right? Well, they, they took the job that I wanted. Well, then maybe God has something even better. Maybe God's preparing you for something even better. I remember I used to coach runners it was a few years ago, and every runner that I coached, they all went on to college, uh, most of them scholarship. And so, but I remember one kid, uh, one, one young athlete just graduated high school. And somebody else got a scholarship. And he said, man, I'm so angry. I said, why are you angry, bro? Don't be mad, bro. He said, man, I wanted that scholarship. I said, wait a minute. You're limiting yourself to one school? There are many schools in Texas, D1 schools, D2 schools, other schools. And if that's not enough, there are 49 other states in the U.S., right? Maybe you're so focused on this one school, maybe God wants to bless you with the University of Hawaii, right? <laughs> well, since you put it that way, <laughs> Right? And, and if that's taken, man, there are other countries. That, they got countries, they got universities in Australia too. Right? And, and so why do we limit ourselves? God is a creator. And if somebody else takes what you thought was supposed to be yours, God is so awesome, he'll just create another one. And he'll create it just for you. Amen. I, I, I travel. When I, when I travel, I always tell students, I've, I've told you all this before, but I teach students that every single one of us have a superpower. All right. And that comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. You are God's masterpiece. I just don't use that verse, but I use the language. Every single one of us have a deposit and an imprint of God's grace. And every one of us is called to be the best in the world. Now, it's easy to say, well, how can I be the best in the world if I can't? I can't beat them. No, no, no. Being the best that God has called you to be is not about beating somebody else. It's about asking God to give you his grace so that you can shine the light of God the best possible way. That's why when people say, man, what is your church like? You know, you go to church in the radio, what is it like? It's the best in the world. Because it's the only church that God has placed here with this calling, with this anointing. Now, he didn't take somebody else's anointing to give it to us. They also are called to be the best in the world. And when we shine together, we realize God is a God of abundance. People that are massively successful don't get jealous of other people's success. People who are massively successful get encouraged. We need you to succeed because your success and your abundance Abundance inspires me. Amen? Amen. Yeah, he's a God of abundance. Amen. All right. He has an abundance of ideas, abundance of skills, abundance of talents, abundance of opportunities. When it all gets taken up, he'll just create more. Okay. God has already created more solutions than problems that have been created. Let that sink in. There are already more solutions in God that he's created than problems you and I will have. There are more opportunities that God has already created than disappointments that exist. Okay? Now, I told you all last week, I was prophesying it over you. And I said, because I used the example of us going to eat at, at the restaurant, I said, God's get ready. God's going to give you these just because blessings. And last week, I got one of those just because. That's an awesome thing. I was speaking blessing over you, and I got some too. 
Or so they call me from the school. I told you all, I'm keeping you all posted. They call me from my school and they say, hey, we want somebody um, to teach the same content that you're teaching, but we want you to be able to do it in Spanish. And we've been looking everywhere because the school that I'm at is going to convert from a kinder through eighth grade academy. They're going to convert it to a middle school. And they said, we've been looking in this entire district, thousands of teachers, and we can't find one person. And then we came across your resume. We realized you're already there. They said, we're going to give you an extra $2,000. I said, I'll take that. And they said, sure, <laughs> sign me up. And they said, but you just got to pass the test. I felt so confident. I think it was the anointing of God. I said, I can take the test right now and pass it. And they said, good, because there's one on Saturday. <laughs> And then, you know, y'all ever gotten bold, like you feel the anointing of God, and then it's like, all right, you're up. And I said, well, you know, I, I live kind of far away from the school. Where do you live? And I told them, they're like, oh, great. It's five minutes from your house. I said, but I'm teaching right now. It's on Saturday. I go to the gym in the morning. It's at 2 p.m. <laughs> we'll reimburse you. So I went and I took the test. I don't know if it's ever happened to you. Like you feel God, you feel confident, like before, and then you get there and you're like, that was me, all right? And so I was doing this test. It was three hours, and it had, like, make-believe scenarios where you had to call parents and, and talk to them about the progress of their kids in Spanish. And, and um, it was like, ahora, tú vas a decirle a Ricardo, al mamá de Ricardo, ¿cómo va su progreso? Now you're going to tell Ricardo's mom about his progress in school. Bing! And I was like, bueno. Mr. Garcia, I know, I'm Mr. Garcia. Hold on. <laughs> I thought I bombed the test, but they gave me back the results. I got almost a 90. All right? Yeah. All right? Stop. Stop. <laughs> get ready for these just becauses. I believe we're going to get these phone calls. Last week, millions of people. I'm so excited for mil a lot of my friends. Millions of my friends. I only have like three. But... <laughs> I'm so excited. Like, my three friends all got stimulus. That's awesome. If, are they going to do more stimulus or not? I don't know. But I can tell you, if the U.S. government does or doesn't, God's going to keep on sending us stimulus. He's going to keep on sending us unexpected blessings. He's a God of abundance. Okay? So how do we come to this place of abundance? Five quick things. I got to go fast. I'll take about four minutes on each one. Number one. We got to have a mindset of abundance. We have to have a mindset of abundance. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, uh, God here, Jesus is speaking, and he says, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Okay? And he's not saying, like, not be concerned, but he's saying, don't, don't start to let that worry consume you so much that that's all you see, okay? Now, I have people in my life that, like, as you're giving them an answer and a solution, they're creating a new problem, right? Oh, I know I'm going to get this, but what's going to happen next month? All right, they're already creating. And guys, don't, don't start creating problems, right? And, and fear is faith in reverse. It's negative faith. Faith sees issues and sees God working through them. Fear sees issues and it sees abandonment through them. And we'll start to create issues. God, Christ says, don't worry. What you're going to eat, what you're going to put on, isn't your life so much more than food and clothes? In the next verse, he says, look at the birds. Look at the sparrows here. He says, look at the birds. <laughs> they don't sow. They don't reap. All right? They don't work. They don't gather barns. But your heavenly Father feeds them. Okay? Now, there's some birds that go to the, back, the pastor's backyard. And this morning, I heard Pastor Norman tell Pastor Sandra, you're going to have to feed the birds. You know what didn't happen? Those birds weren't having a conference. And they weren't saying, how are we going to get the food? And they didn't start thinking about it. And they didn't start putting on a bird show so that you could feed them. They're chilling. All right? They're taken care of. All right, so look at what God says here in verse 33. Look at what Christ says. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Put him first. Everything else is just going to be added. All right, don't worry about it. Okay, in James chapter 4, verse 1, he says this. Why do you all have fights? Why do you all war? Don't they come from the desires and the pleasure that war inside of your members? Okay. 
You want or you lust and you do not have. You murder and you covet and you cannot obtain. You fight in war. But the whole reason you don't have is because you don't ask. All right? And so this verse is talking about jealousy where people are angry. Why did they get that job? Why did they get that loan? Why did they get that car? Why didn't I get to go in school? And God is saying, why are you all fighting against each other? Why are you trying to outdo each other? Money is an amplifier. If you have good in your heart, man, good is going to be amplified. You're going to be able to do so much more. If you have wickedness in your heart, if you had hatred in your heart, okay, I've come across some people that, that they use money as a weapon and as hatred, and God is saying, why are you doing that? Man, he said, I, you don't have to fight against each other, okay? If you really need something, just ask God. God, help me. God, give it to me. Instead of seeing what others have, see the, the everybody, nobody story. When we say things like everybody else has, but I don't. We victimize ourselves. Nobody else is going through what I'm going through. God is saying, hey, wait, instead of starting to do the comparison thing, just ask me. What is it that you want? That's what he says. Ask, all right? Knock on the door and it will be open. Seek and you'll find. Ask and you'll receive. All right. My question to you today is, you know, before we close, we're going to ask. I think sometimes we're afraid to ask because we think, well, what if God knows that I really need this? He already does. We're going to spend some time asking. That's what we're going to do. I feel led. We're going to ask before we go. All right. Next verse. An abundance mindset. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight. This is the most positive verse in the Bible. I, I like to think that I want to be a positive person. And in the whole Bible, this is the most affirmatory, positive verse. It says this, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that always in all things, having all that you need, you can have an abundance in every good work. Look at all of those always more than enough. I think there's eight times God is able to make all grace abound. So always in all sufficiency, in all things, having an abundance for every good work. These are eight affirmations where God is saying, this is the way I want to bless you. Let's have this abundance mindset where we know how God has a plan. If there's something that you really need, God's going to get it to you, right? And if there's something that's in God's will for your life, then you and I can ask him. That's what it said in James. Just ask me. We can say, God, I know you want me to go back to school, but the bill is $6,000. Give me the grace. God, I know you want me to, to be a blessing here. I know you want me to step up. God, give me the grace. We ask him. He has an abundance. I remember and again, abundance doesn't mean a certain monetary value. It's easy to think I will be, uh, I'm living in God's abundance when I have X amount of money. I will be okay when I make X amount of money in my job. I remember my first college degree. I drove out to Florida and I, I had my car. I gave it the name, the Faith Mobile. All right, because you needed faith to make that thing move. And I, I drove that thing a thousand miles. My friend oh, had a pastor friend who made fun of me and said, Hey, David, your car's like Lazarus, man. We got to raise it from the dead. And I said, Man, Lazarus, that was just once in John chapter 11. This is every red light. We got to believe for a new resurrection. Man, I went out there to Florida, wasn't even accepted into the school. $400 in my pocket, Faith Mobile, 1,000 miles away. And I remember I didn't even know how I was going to make it, okay? But it came back to this right here. God, if this is in your will, then you're going to open up the door, okay? The first semester I was there, I had to apply for food stamps. I remember. My friends are like, dude, I don't believe in food stamps. I said, me neither, but I don't believe in being hungry, <laughs> all right? After six months, they didn't, they didn't give that back to me, all right? And God kept on using other means. And I think the, the challenge is when we put all of our hope on one person or one organization or one entity, right? Like my friend who said, I want to go to that school. 
ladies and gentlemen, why don't we go beyond thinking that's where my blessing is going to come through. This is the person who's going to do it and say, God, you are bigger than my limited thinking. God, it is possible that right now you have a source of blessing and you have an open door that I can't even comprehend. Just because you haven't seen it before doesn't mean God can't give it to you. Just because nobody else hasn't done it doesn't mean you can't be the first. See, and is it possible, ladies and gentlemen, where the scripture says that he's able to do above and beyond what you and I can think or imagine? Is it possible that right now God is preparing blessings that are beyond our comprehension? If you would have told us 18 months ago, thank you, thank you, I appreciate you, Christian, but it's going to get better. If it, <laughs> If you would have told us 18 months ago that our online broadcast was going to be reaching thousands around the world, all right, the Laredo one inside of me would have said, ah. right? I couldn't see it. But God had something bigger than we had ever even prepared. Some of you here right now, if somebody would have told you you're going to live in Laredo, Texas, you would have said, ah. here you are. We're stuck together. <laughs> and we're going to be blessed together. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I really got to move. Number two, number two, let's go fast. Partnership of abundance. Partnership. We got to come into partnership with God. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, he says this, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. That's 10% of our income. And he says, when you do that, just see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you cannot contain. The Bible, this is interesting because the language of the prophet is test me. In, other, in another scripture, Jesus said, don't test God. But here the prophet's saying, no, in this one area, you test it. You go ahead and say, God, I'm going to trust you. How many of you here in this place are tithers, and you have seen God do more for you with 90% and his blessing than 100% without his blessing. Amen. This is a church. We're a tithing church. <laughs> Pastor Sandra has said many times that to not preach tithing is a very selfish thing because if you don't give the opportunity for people to tithe, you're robbing them from a blessing. We believe. We believe that God can open doors. We believe that God has a plan to continue increasing us. Okay? He can give you, man, when you are in partnership with God, he can give you one idea, one connection, one solution. Okay? You, I don't believe that you and I, I wrote this down, you and I right now, I don't think we have the capacity to obtain and to hold all of the blessings that God will be pouring out on us. So he's preparing us so that we can obtain them. Man, God can open doors in ways we can't even think. I remember, um, I haven't traveled out that much this year because of COVID, but I remember we started working here, and Lloyd's one of them, Claudia's one of them. We started speaking to students in schools here in Laredo, okay? Uh, there was no, there really wasn't a lot of things for students, and it was a very tough time in Laredo. So they called the church. They actually called Kathy Baker, who was here at this time. And so she helped get us ready so that we could have a team and go talk to kids in schools, okay? After four years, people grew up, you know. I think Eloy moved, Claudia uh, started working here more at the church. Everyone moved, moved on, college, things happen, okay? And so our, our team that was awesome for four years, in four years we saw probably 40,000 Laredo students in their schools. After four years it was done. It was a great thing. And then two years after that was over, I got a phone call. And they said, David, we need you to come talk to the kids in schools. Now, if I had a team, it was no problem when I had a team. If I was struggling, I'd give the mic to Eloy. And I remember I used to tell him, you know, guys, if you're struggling, don't, don't save yourself. Just give the mic to somebody else. We're a team. But when you're alone, man, if you're struggling, that's on you. All right? And so I remember they said, David, we want you to come talk to kids. And I said, no, I, I don't have a team anymore. And they said, David, we know you can do it. We've heard you with a team or alone. I said, I can't do it. They said, we'll pay you. So I went. <laughs> I went. 
And yeah, exactly. I was trying to pay for my school in Europe. I needed money. Coming back to, I prayed, God bless me. God, it's your will. By this point, I was beyond the Florida school. I was beyond the faith mobile. Now I was going to do a master's in Europe. And, uh, but I prayed, God, if it's your plan, give me the money. And then the phone call came. Like, not at the moment. Lord, helping. Not, not that close, but close enough. And I started to think, what if this is the avenue that God wants to bless me? But I'm too focused on me. I'm too focused on I can't. I'm too focused on what if it's not good and they don't like me. And I said, so I thought about it and I said, you know what? Even if I'm not good and they don't like me, I'm going to go to Europe next week. Let's go. And so, so I went. And to my surprise, it was well. And I started doing all of that for two years here in the Rio Grande Valley. And then I was at my mom's house, and I saw a magazine, just saw a business magazine, and it said, do you want to be a motivational speaker? And I was thinking, well, <laughs> yes, I do. So I started reading it, and it was about a guy who was doing what I was doing in Laredo, but all over the world. It's a young guy, a little younger than me. And so at that time, I wanted to reach out to him. And I said, hey, maybe we can come in partnership, man. I know you're busy. Maybe I can do some of the work that you don't do. And so I, God gave me an idea, coming back to partnership here with God. I had an idea. I was already on my way to Europe for a, a ministry trip. And I thought, what if I make a video right there by the Ark of Triumph and just something cheesy like, hey, we should triumph together. No one was doing that 10 years ago. Okay. And so I, I made this video. And I sent it to him. Years later, I just, I'm about to complete 10 years with the speaking company. Now I'm the veteran in the speaking company. They have about 20 speakers. I'm the first one. They even gave me like this huge, like Super Bowl type ring for 10 years. I'll bring it next time. I'll bring the anniversary ring. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm a motivational gangster. No, <laughs> so I'll bring it. But they gave me a ring. But I asked him years later, I said, why did you choose me? And he said, because a lot of people have written me over the years, but you got creative and sent a video. It was a simple idea. And I'm thinking, what other ideas does God have for you and I? Amen? All right. I'll tell you what. I got, I got, I got, four, I got three more. I'm just going to do two quickly. The third one, a work ethic of abundance. Let's work. Real simple. Let's just go to Colossians 3.23. I have to come in for a landing here. Colossians 3.23. It says, everything you do, do it with all your heart as unto the Lord and not unto other humans. Not unto men or men and women. Knowing, I think the next verse says, knowing that it is from the Lord that you'll get your reward. Okay? For you serve the Lord Christ. Very simply, at work. Just treat everybody as if they were Jesus. It's very simple. Treat everybody as if, as, as, if, as if Jesus was the customer. If you're a server, pretend you were treating Jesus, okay? If you're cutting hair, pretend you're cutting Jesus' hair, all right? If you're at the gym, pretend you're training Jesus. If you're a school teacher, pretend you're, training, you're, you're teaching Jesus. Now, here's the thing. When you treat everybody like if they're Jesus, they ain't all going to treat you back like you, Jesus, Y'all ever been nice to people, treat them like Christ, and they treat you like something else? <laughs> treat them like Jesus anyway. Amen? Amen? Because he's the one who's going to bless you. Man, work. At work, come with solutions. Come to work with solutions. Instead of coming with problems, come with solutions. Let me give you a news flash. We don't have to say everything we think. There are, there are things at my job that I don't like. I don't have to say anything. We're on a group text and people, oh my gosh, can you understand? Can you believe? All right. Garcia, what do you think? I think I'm hungry. <laughs> right? I just changed the subject. We don't have to say everything we think. If, if you want a, a better work environment, then be that change that you want. Instead of coming with, with more problems, let's come with solutions. All right, treat everyone like they're Jesus, okay? Even if they don't give that back to you, they don't give that same kind of kindness back to you. Now, I know a lot today of, of these, like, seminars and motivational seminars. I've even been a part of them. They talk about live your passion, 
work in your passion. I understand that. But not all the time in every job are we in our passion. King David was anointed to be a king, all right? But he was in the king's palace playing music, ducking spears. Joseph was anointed to be a leader, but he was in a prison serving there, okay? And so even though you don't feel like this is like my best life now, not every job is going to feel like it's your best at that moment. But if we serve and if we believe, God can use that to teach us things to prepare us for the next step, right? Even now, last week we had a staff meeting and there were some challenges on Zoom. I didn't even know Zoom was a thing a year ago. I did not know. I'm not trying. It's not a joke. I really didn't know what Zoom was, all right? Now, fast forward a year later because of the way we've done school, we had a staff meeting and everyone, they were stuck for about five minutes all right, I didn't even have to be behind the screen. I said, click on the right. You're going to click on this. You're going to open up this. Get that going. Boom, right? I didn't know how to do that a year ago, but God used this process to give me other skills. And if you are in a place where you don't feel fully actualized, know that even though you don't feel it, God is growing you. We're going to give our best work. Being a teacher, it's, it's, I was talking with Cynthia earlier, all right, awesome childhood friend. We're talking about being teachers, yeah. And I said, Cynthia, we're blessed, but we're also stressed, all right? We were talking about it, right? And one of my students the other day, I, I went to school last week for spring break to do some tutoring. They opened up the school. Again, it was one of those things where they said, we want teachers to come back. And we all said, we don't want to come back. And they said, well, we'll pay you. So I went back. And uh, <laughs> so I was going out for uh, every, 20 min every 90 minutes, every hour and a half. We took the kids outside, 15 minutes, walked with them. They're middle school kids, sixth graders, seventh graders. And uh, we were in like the third day, we were going for a walk. And one of the sixth graders asked me, he said, Mr. Garcia, so um, what do you do for a living? <laughs> I think he thought I was just going to hang out with him because I didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> I said, I don't know, man. I, maybe I should start looking for a job or something. <laughs> All right. Even then, take your best work ethic. All right. And last one here, last verse. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. Let's have an abundance of gratitude. As we're talking about abundance, let me come back to the fact that our abundance comes in Christ. I know it's easy to think I will be blessed when. I will have enough when. All right? And this last year has caused a lot of disruption on many levels. Okay? And I think this verse right here speaks to this moment so poignantly in ways, uh, in, in you in profound ways. If you can come, go ahead and come join me, Darian. The Bible says this, Philippians chapter 10. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that at last you, your care for me has flourished again. Though you did care, you lacked opportunity. <laughs> Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. He goes on to say, I know how to have a little, how to be abased, and I know how to have a lot. Everywhere and in all things, I've learned to be both full and to be hungry, to abound and to suffer need. I think this last year has disrupted so many things. And I think we've had to learn how to be content with different things. The apostle says this in the next verse. He said, this is the secret. All right. If my bank account today is not what I wish it was. All right. If my life right now doesn't look what I know God has promised me at this moment, this is the secret is this right here in uh, the next verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So because of that, I am grateful. I know that God is increasing my life. I know he has a plan of blessing. And if I don't see it materialize right now, I know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know I might not have all the resources that I think I need, but I know even with these limited resources, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know that my mental uh, well-being has really just gone through the storms of, of, of just all of the, the challenges of this last year. But God, I know. God, I know you're with me. I know you'll never leave me. I know you'll never forsake me. God, I know that you are with me. 
So here as we close, I'm go, let me go through this again. We have an, an abundance, a mindset of abundance. We have a work ethic of abundance. We have a partnership with God of abundance. And we have uh, a gratitude in abundance. I believe, now one year ago, I prophesied here exactly one year ago. I think this was the last Sunday before we closed for a bit. And then we came back and we closed. But I remember I spoke here, so did the pastors. We spoke this, that this next, that we spoke that God was going to continue this work. God was going to sustain this work. And here we are one year later. And we have seen the fulfillment of that prophecy, how God has continued to bless us. We thank you, workers, um, Tonio and Sori and Emily. And I, don't, I can't see who's in the back, but in the back camera as well. And then all of you here serving, we thank you because you are a part of the fulfillment of this prophecy. You coming to church today and hanging out with us and letting us uh, stimulate each other's faith. This is a fulfillment of that prophecy a year ago. But now today... I speak in the name of Jesus that in this next year, we're going to not, we're going to come. Uh, God has sustained us, but we're going to come into a place of abundance. This next year is going to be even above and beyond. I speak in the name of Jesus. In the next 52 weeks, we're going to see open doors. We're going to see increase. We're going to be going from glory to glory. We're going to be seeing those just because blessings. Go ahead and come on in. Hey, we were looking for somebody. We found you. We're going to see those. I believe that many of us here, we're going to see 130% growth. I'm looking right here at my friend, Carlos. I'm just going to use you as an example, man. Three different times with housing property. Carlos went out of his way, called me late. Call, if I called him in, in the late evening, if I called him in the morning, he served me. I didn't pay him anything. All right, he said, David, I want to do this three different times and I could see his he's blessed he's growing man he is busy non-stop because he puts this into practice and I I see you and you're an example I want to be like you I want to be like those people there's many of you here in this church I want to be like you and I want to grow and I want to serve the way you do in fact that's the name of your company service service first service first oh you can't get more Christian than that I just want to serve people it's a blessing all right, and I believe in the next year, that's going to be our motto. As we serve and as we bless, God's going to serve and he's going to bless us in new ways. In the name of Jesus, amen? Amen. All right, so I told you all that I was, I just felt so, uh, so much in my heart in the beginning part that we are going to spend some uh, a few moments asking God. So right where you're at, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to allow you to have a word of prayer where you can make your petitions and requests known to the Lord with thanksgiving. And then we're going to speak prophetically over you. Okay? And um, yeah, so that's what we'll do. And then we'll, we'll see what the Holy Spirit does from there. So let's just take a moment right here. That scripture says we don't have because we don't ask. So God, right now we ask. God, you already know what we were going to ask before we asked it. God, so we're asking you, God, to protect us. God, we're asking you to bless us. God, we're asking you to open up new doors. God, you said that you will rebuke the devourer. God, so we thank you for keeping us in health. We thank you for rebuking the devourer. God, we thank you, God, that you're blessing us. God, I thank you that every person connected to this ministry is experiencing increase. God, I thank you, God, that what you bless, nobody can curse. God, in my spirit, I see as they're talking about another wave, I'm seeing a tidal wave of God's blessing, of your blessing and your abundance. God, I thank you that we're coming into our best times in the name of Jesus. We just ask you, God, we ask you, right doors, right job, right connections, right opportunities, going back to do the right programs, God, the right partnerships, and we thank you for it, God. We're asking you, and we're thanking you. God, we thank you for your word. God, this word has been spoken, but it's going to continue working in our lives throughout the course of this next year. This word is going to continue being activated. God, things are going to continue to happen, so we thank you. We thank you, God, that you're already not only preparing us, but you're preparing the other people that we're designed to connect with. God, so that the blessing, the mutual blessing of God can be magnified. God, we thank you that in our homes, there is no not strife 
for money. There is not money strife. People are not fighting and yelling because God, you are the one who is the Lord of our finances. God, I thank you that, that money is a tool not to divide, but money is a tool to bless and nurture and grow. God, and we thank you that you're doing it for us. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak growth. I declare uh, a blessing of God. I declare the blessing of God on everything that you touch. I declare favor in your work that people would see the anointing of God on you and that his favor would usher you in to new areas and new realms, places where you might not feel qualified, places where you might not have had the degrees and the diplomas for, but God's anointing is sending you there. I thank you, God, that you are giving your people solutions at work. You are helping us, God, to treat other people like Jesus. God, I thank you that in our life, all of us, God, we treat our work as if it was our own business. God, I thank you that we do service first. I thank you that we serve others and we serve you in our work. God, for those who are businessmen and businesswomen, God, I thank you, God, that the streams are picking up, the water's being stirred. God, and I thank you, God, that you're anointing men and women here, God, to continue being blessed. And God, we're not going to hold all this blessing. God, we're not going to brag about the blessing. God, we're going to be thankful and we're going to share it, God. We thank you that we're coming into a season of overflow in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for a quickening and anointing upon us. David, I want you to come back and lead us in a confession. But Lord, even now, I thank you that you are knocking at the door of my heart and the hearts of people that are listening to this message today. And they're saying, wow, this is amazing, but I feel empty in my heart. I feel empty in my heart. I feel deadness in my heart. It, it sounds good in theory, but David, I want you to lead them to Jesus and then speak a confession over them. All right, repeat this after me. My life belongs to Jesus. My life belongs to Jesus. My life is hidden in Christ. My life is hidden in Christ. I leave the past behind me. I leave the past behind me. And I submit myself. And I submit myself. To the Lordship of Jesus Christ. To the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I confess you as my Lord. I confess you as my Lord. Jesus, I ask you to wash me with the blood of the Lamb. Wash me in the blood of the Lamb. And cleanse me. And cleanse me. Thank you for making me born again. Thank you for making me born again. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Who has given me this rebirth. Who has given me this rebirth. I am blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed to be a blessing. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. He has called me to go from glory to glory. He has called me to go from glory to glory. I declare I am entering into some fantastic days. I'm declaring that I'm entering into some fantastic days. Days of blessing. Days of blessing. Days of health. Days of health. Days of abundance. Days of abundance. Days of happiness. Days of happiness. Because God is making all things new. New. Because God is making all things new. So Lord, I thank you. So Lord, I thank you. And I receive everything. And I receive everything. Me and my house. Me and my house. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for being with us this week. I thank you for grace and anointing upon our lives, upon our labor. Lord, I just anoint these hands. Some of you need an anointing on your hands. You work with your hands. Come against every spirit of arthritis, anything that would hinder you from being able to be effective in what you're doing, whether it's writing and your hands just kind of seize up. I could just see that. Some people just, mm. but in the name of Jesus, I thank you that we can accomplish the goals you have laid before us. Lord, I thank you that if we have to dig a ditch, it's going to be the best ditch dug ever in the name of Jesus. Go before us, prepare the way, be with us. You are the God of more than enough. In Jesus' name, go in peace, go in love, go in victory. Amen. This is the end of our teaching. For more information, visit thecrossroads.org, download our app, or visit any of our social media platforms. 
Thank you for watching.